This week has been declared the national mourning period for the victims of the deadly Halloween stampede in Itaewon that claimed 155 lives. We send our deepest condolences to bereaved families. Our thoughts and prayers are with the victims. And now it's time for us to discuss more of these headlines in simple keywords. With Adam joining us via Zoom. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Lena. A uh, safe night for you? It certainly was, yes. Uh, still early in the week, but we are still reeling from the tragedy over the weekend. So uh, just um, staying quiet for the time being. All right. Uh, let's actually start off with the latest update we have from the Taiwan tragedy from the weekend. This is our first keyword of the day. Casualties rise. So one more fatality was confirmed from the Halloween crowd crush in Itaewon, raising the death toll from the tragedy to a total of 155. What's the latest, Adam? Right, well, the latest death is a 24-year-old Korean woman who was declared dead as of 9 p.m. Uh, she was in serious condition. Uh, a total of 30 actually do remain still in serious condition, while 122 others sustained minor injuries. Uh, of the 155 dead, 12 were teenagers, 103 were in their 20s, so a lot of young people making up the majority of the death toll. Uh, among those killed were also one mid, uh, middle schooler and five high school students, all from Seoul, and uh, some of their teachers were amongst the dead as well. Um, memorial altars were set up in central Seoul yesterday with crowds visiting to pay their respects. President Yoon, uh, the First Lady, as well as top officials, including the Prime Minister and Seoul Mayor, were among the first to join the mourners. Um, also, many shops and businesses, they've been closed to observe this week-long uh, national period of mourning. Uh, people also respect, uh, paid respects at a makeshift memorial in Itaewon, outside the subway station, near the alley where the crush occurred. Uh, the station entrance, you can, be, uh, you can see, uh, has been adorned with a rose of flowers and offerings. Mm. Uh, memorial altars have been set up in total in 17 cities and provinces, and they will receive visitors through Saturday. So that is when the national mourning period uh, will run until... Um, now, in terms of the actual cause of the uh, incidents, police are analysing scores of witness accounts and security camera footage to determine the cause of the accident. No acts subject to criminal charges have been detected so far. And because there's been a lot of conflicting witness uh, accounts and reports, mm. police are looking carefully um, into those along with that CCTV, uh, CCTV footage. Uh, and meanwhile, President Yoon instructed the government to come up with a crowd control system for unorganized and spontaneous events mm. of which the Itaewon Halloween festivities were part of. And he also called for thorough assistance for funeral preparations and medical treatment for the injured, as well as a complete investigation into the cause. So not necessarily looking for blame, but to better the system. It seems that there wasn't necessarily good protocol when it came to this uh, event of a scale with not necessarily one organizer in charge of all these safety precautions. So going right. forward, it seems that's what we really want to keep tabs on. Yeah. All right. Uh, help is, I suppose, on the way. And this is perhaps the least a government can do. This is our second key word of the day. Compensation. So the government has decided to pay 20 million won in compensation to the families of the victims and up to 15 million won in funeral costs. So tell us the details. Right. Well, up to 15 million won will be offered for funeral expenses, as you said, and transportation costs will also be covered for those whose bodies were moved from hospitals to funeral parlors uh, close to the deceased uh, homes. Uh, relief money will be paid to the families of the deceased as well, while survivors of the crowd crush will be paid between 5 million to 10 million won, uh, depending on the degree of their injuries. Telecommunication charges and taxes will be reduced or deferred for the families and the injured, along with relief funds. In addition to relief money and funeral expenses, necessary support for families through one-on-one -on -one matching between the families and local government officials will also be provided. So basically one public official will be assigned to each bereaved family. Officials will be dispatched to 32 funeral parlours as well across the country to help facilitate funerals. Uh, psychological treatment for survivors and family members will be provided. 
as well as support for foreigners who are injured and those who are hurt during relief activities. Um, Finance Minister Chu Gyeong-ho has also vowed to provide swift financial and administrative support uh, and will be making a separate budget for the relief funds as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Foreign Minister Park Jin, meanwhile, also told Parliament that the government is reviewing ways to assist the foreign victims at a similar level to that of Korea nationals. Now, under the nation's law on disaster response and safety, local citizens and foreigners alike are actually eligible for the support schemes provided in areas designated Mm -hmm. as special disaster uh, zones, of which Yongsan District is now a part of. Um, Park added his ministry will take necessary measures as well to assist the bereaved families and their flights back home in consultation with the Korean embassies in the mm. respective country. There's just over a dozen foreigners who have flown back home in li- uh, after um, the incident as well and more support measures for foreigners because mm. they did make up uh, part of the casualties uh, will also be provided as well. All right, let's move on to our third keyword of the day. Nuclear plants. So South Korea and Poland have signed an agreement to develop a nuclear power plant in the European nation. This is raising hopes for Seoul's first nuclear power plant export in more than a decade. What's the latest? All right, well, this all comes after the UN administration has vowed to kind of bring back nuclear energy after it was kind of downsized or scrapped, if you will, under the previous Moon administration. Uh, the latest deal comes as Poland kind of strives to phase out coal and lower its carbon emissions and South Korea seeks to revise its, uh, revive rather mm. its uh, nuclear industry. The MOU signed by both nations will assess the uh, feasibility of building four 1,400 megawatt nuclear reactors in Patnau in central uh, Poland using South Korean technology. Uh, Poland's ZEPAK and PGE and Korea Hydro and Nuclear Power with government backing, intend to prepare a uh, preliminary de- uh, development plan mm. for the plant mm. by the end of this year. The Patnau site is located some 240 kilometers west of Warsaw. The construction will be based on the APR 1400 technology, which is a next generation reactor model developed by South Korea. It boasts a larger capacity, a longer lifespan and cost effectiveness. Um, The agreement was made days after Poland actually chose U.S. nuclear energy firm Westinghouse to build a separate nuclear power plant. Now, if Korea and Poland clinch a deal, a final deal for the Patnau project, it will be South Korea's first nuclear power plant export since the 2009 Baraka project in the United Arab Emirates. Mm. Um, The MOU also aims to boost bilateral cooperation in the nuclear energy sector as a whole as well. Um, and during his visit to Korea, uh, Polish State Assets Minister Jacek Sasin also discussed enhancing Poland's defense partnership with Seoul mm. also. There's been um, plans for a weapons deal between the two countries right. as well. Uh, so a lot more expansion in terms of defense and nuclear energy between Korea and Poland. All right. So we'll have to keep tabs on the, I suppose, joint efforts between South Korea and Poland uh, for now. Uh, that is the latest agreement between the two countries. Let's move on to our COVID coverage of the day. This is our fourth keyword of the day. Indoor mask rule. So Korea's top health advisor predicts that the indoor mask rule could be completely lifted after the next COVID-19 outbreak during the winter season, as long as, this is probably the important part, a completely new variant does not appear. Right. Well, we certainly don't know whether it will appear or not. Uh, It's certainly unpredictable at this point. But Chung Gu-suk told reporters uh, that the idea that we can take off our indoor masks next spring uh, if there are um, no completely new variants uh, uh, has not changed basically that stance Mm -hmm. has not changed but he is pointing out that another wave does does have to come first uh, the one that has been anticipated for the colder winter season and he added that the bq.1 and bq1 dot uh, bq.1.1 variants likely to become dominant strains during the next epidemic in the winter are also a sub-variant of BA.5, that Omicron variant that we've been seeing spreading mm-hmm. um, during the spring. Now, despite the recent increase in daily cases, Chung stressed that it is difficult to assess whether the next viral wave has actually begun. Uh, Chung warned, however, that the immunity formed during the previous Omicron pandemic in March will run out sometime in November and that an increase in cases is inevitable. 
He stressed that high risk groups should get the booster vaccines uh, and bivalent vaccines at that of which he said are protective against uh, the Omicron variants, as well as medical institutions across the country uh, helping to work um, uh, to prescribe COVID-19 treatments as well. Mm. Uh, Tang also urged the health authorities to closely watch the recent increase in severe cases and fatalities tied to COVID-19. In the space of 24 hours, we saw a rise in both of those numbers. Uh-huh. Uh, regarding reasons for the increase in the severe cases and fatality rates, Chung analyzed the hidden infections, uh, a decrease in vaccination rates, and the appearance of new variants such as BQ.1 and XBB may have had an impact. Uh, the government has been looking into partially easing its an, uh, indoor mask mandate. It is reviewing expert opinions as we speak, uh, but expert opinions are kind of split in regard to indoor mask mandates. So, of course, more discussions are needed. All right, there you have it. So it seems that the health experts are eyeing next spring for lowering the indoor mask rule, but a lot of contingencies there. So we'll have to wait and see how this winter season unfolds for us in South Korea. And with that, let's move on to our final keyword of the day. Losing steam. So more gloomy data regarding Korea's economy. Industrial output fell in the month of September for the third month in a row, it turns out, with retail sales and facility investment also losing ground. What's the latest? Yeah, so there's kind of a, a triple whammy or a triple decline, if you will. Uh, statistics Korea data shows a seasonally adjusted production in all industries, which exclude the agriculture, livestock and fishery sector, shared 0.6% in September from a month earlier. Uh, the figure fell at 0.2% in July and 0.1% in August. Um, output in the mining, manufacturing, gas and electricity industries fell 1.8% due mainly to losses from sectors such as chips and cars, of which there's been a kind of a supply chain glut uh, at the moment. Uh, the agency also said the decrease also came as Typhoon Hinamnor, which hit the country in early September, Uh, disrupted steel production. Mm. Um, The service output also lost 0.3% amid weakened domestic demand. Uh, Retail sales, a gauge of private spending, decreased 1.8% as people spent less on non-durable goods, including food, although they did spend more on automobiles. um, uh, The reason probably being that uh, the high food prices and inflation affecting Mm. Uh, kind of people's consumer sentiment. Uh, The agency added that sales of pharmaceutical products also decreased due to the falling number of COVID-19 patients too. Mm. Um, Facility investment fell 2.4% on month compared with a 10.7% on month growth in August. So quite a drop there. Uh, The decrease mainly came as businesses spent less on purchasing machines. Um, Korea saw its industrial output, retail sales and investment fall altogether for the first time since July. Now, economists say the latest data indicate that the economic recovery or the improvement that many had hoped has weakened. Mm. Uh, The recovery and the consumption may be delayed due to high prices Uh, high inflation, as well as hikes in interest rates as well. All right, so the gloomy forecast continues. Uh, Thank you very much, Adam, for today's coverage. Have a safe day, and we'll see you tomorrow. You too. You're welcome. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.